Hello and welcome to video number 9 in the Different Angle 3D video tutorial series. This marks a change in what we're doing with the tutorials. The first eight were getting started uh, more of a talk about um, Blender's features and tools. We're now moving on to a more practical element of the project and for the next few um, tutorials I'm working under the theme of steel frames and fabrications and this first video will be a fairly simple um, non-precise reconstruction of a Dutch barn um, as shown on the screen at the moment. Uh, it should walk any new user from looking at the default cube and taking that and modifying it and changing it to form the barn structure from that one cube object. Um, hopefully it'll be informative. We'll first of all be looking at um, the reference image that we're going to work from and how that was obtained and adapted to be usable. Um, so some of the first video will be looking at the use of GIMP as an image editor and then we'll move on to constructing the barn around the reference image. So we'll get straight into the tutorials. The first place most people will go when they're looking for reference images is probably Google Images. And it's always worth noting whether the images that you're looking at are Creative Commons listed uh, or whether you need to pay for the copyright to use them. Um, I found this one on um, Commons Wikimedia. Um, not really useful as a reference image, but it gives you an idea of the Dutch barn format. And I'm picking that format because of the rounded roof as it opens up more tools that we can use when we're demonstrating what Blender does. Um, fortunately for me, um, there's a hay barn uh, about two and a half miles from where I live. So I uh, ventured out with the camera and took the dogs for a good walk and uh, had a walk round it. It's not a Dutch barn, but uh, it's very easy to modify the roof for what we want. But it does give you a good idea of the um, relationships between the length and width of the building, the height, and various other aspects. So what we're modelling, the proportions, look generally right to the real world. Um, while I was there, I had a walk around the, uh, the barn and just took a few shots of different areas of the structure so you could see roughly how it's put together, um, even though we're talking about a prop um, for an image that may not be close up. Um, you still want some detail of the inside in case um, it, it's shown on the image or the animation that you're doing. So it's always worth getting plenty of photographs while you're there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was measure the size of the RSJs just to get the ratio from uh, width and depth. Unfortunately, I'd forgot to take a measuring tape. So while I was there, I just took a couple of shots using my hand as a reference. And it means if you are out and about with your phone or camera and you see something, you can at least zoom that photo in on your computer screen. So it's just your hand's the same size on the photo as you're holding your hand in front of the screen and get some approximate measurements. Um, but the key photos that you need for a reference image uh, especially of a building, would be the front um, of the building. And the key when taking that photograph is to try and get yourself on the centre line of the building and stand a fair distance back with a long lens so you minimise any lens distortion and you can get a reasonable um, profile of that side of the building. Also try and keep it level um, horizontally on that and the same happens when you go to the side view as well i missed on keeping it level because the horizon wasn't actually level it was going uphill slightly so i was thrown by that but it's easily corrected in an image editing program but we've got the two images that we need to build a reference image so we'll take these into gimp and just modify them slightly so they're more useful in blender okay i've opened the side view and the front view in GIMP. I'm using GIMP um, 2.10.18, uh, one of the newer versions. Um, any image editor um, should be able to do what we're doing in this, so it can be done in your image editor of uh, preference. 
Um, but the first thing to do is to check that the image is, is square and level. So we can just drag down uh, a reference edge from the margins. Um, you can see that I've got the horizon pretty good on the, the barn and at the back there it's all pretty much level. Um, vertically not too much distortion from the camera because we stood a good distance away with a fairly long focal length. The only thing I didn't quite get was I wasn't dead on the centre line of the building front to back. You can see there's a very slight difference between the apex of the roof and the back RSJ uh, but not enough to make a difference. So the first first operation will be to crop down tight into the building. So just select the crop tool and drag a rectangle over the building. And we can then just drag it down fairly tight in. Um, we don't need any of the surrounding information that's on there. So that's pretty much that's pretty much overgrown in the other corner. I'll just crop that back. So we've got that one as a useful image now. And then we'll do the same in the side view. Um, but you can already see that uh, I've mentioned earlier it wasn't quite level. So the first thing we need to do um, is rotate the roof. Just go back into the move tool. Rotate the roof so it sits level um, to the horizontal. So the, the rotate tool is under the group of tools um, that the scale tool is open on at the moment. So we go into rotate, click on the image, and then you can just freely drag it and rotate it around. The centre point is on the centre of the image until the roof lines through. Oop. Pretty much level to the horizon. And just accept that rotation. So we've now got that transformed. Um, back to the move tool, get rid of that uh, reference and the vertical is pretty much spot on. And we've got the uh, center, got the center point of the building when I took that photograph because you can't see the RSJ that's behind it. So we can now crop that one with the crop tool and come in tight on there. There's a little bit more um, lens distortion on this one because the the edges are further out it's a wider building um, when you look on the side than it is on the front but we can just zoom into probably the lowest leg just below the grass line so the distortion there shouldn't really matter too much and crop that one so we've got two two images cropped down tight now um, this one is 744 pixels high and this one is 1400 pixel high simply because of how much of the photo um, they filled. So we need to scale this one down to the 744 pixels. So if you go into um, image and go down to scale image and change the height, make sure that the um, chain is closed so that both are affected and it maintains the aspect ratio and change that to 744 and the other one will change accordingly and scale that. So we've now got the two images at the same height and, and cropped. Um, the width of this one is 1209 so we can add some to the canvas of this and bring both images onto the same canvas. So um, we need to add probably 2300 just give us a gap between the two of 100 pixels so on this one we go again into image but this time to the canvas size which gives you the size of the the layer but not the size of the Im it doesn't change the size of the image so we want to add um 1000 300 I think we said just cancel that a second um, yeah 1300 so again image canvas size and the width um, would go up to 3850 
so 3850 and resize that and that's given us now a, a blank area on the canvas where we can copy this image into so in this one um, in the front view control C to copy it go into the side view and control V to put it in, in view and it's added it as a floating selection at the moment so we just need to click on the uh, create a new layer for the selection on there and we can now move that across to the um, blank area and if you press control and then left click and, or if you start to drag and then press control and left click you can take it over into the left area and finally just put a new layer um, behind those so we click to open new layer and make it white okay and move down behind those two so you've just got a white border between them and we can then crop the total image again tight into the right hand side so we've now got both images on the same canvas um, but it highlights another problem that um, from the position we took the photos from the front view gives you a reference of where the apex is all on the same plane to the RSJs and the side view the apex is much further back so the distortion that comes from a perspective view coming from the camera lens rather than having an orthographic view that you would normally have on a set of plans means that the front RSJs are much taller than you would expect um, compared to the, the front view so we need to scale down the side view slightly so the base stays where it is but the um, gutter line of the roof matches up with the roof on the front view so if we drag down just a reference uh, edge zoom oop, zoom zoom in on that just to get it accurately placed um, at the bottom of the roof I'll just take it slightly higher so it's at the tin roof level rather than where the sideboards come to we can now select the layer that's got the side view on and go to the scale tool which is now underneath the rotate tool and we can scale this image down um, we want to scale the whole image but we want the bottom to stay where it is so if we make sure the aspect ratio is maintained at the same and then just drag down from this very top handle it will leave the bottom where it is and move the, the roof area and bring the sides in um, on the, the front view oh, I just accidentally scaled everything, uh, rotated everything let's just reset that I'm still used to the old um, shortcut keys and they've changed on this version so if you drag that, grab that top handle and now bring it down the whole image scales down until the roof the edge of the um, corrugated tin roof is sitting on the reference line so we've now got the front and the side view with the RSJs at the same height um, but the roof now is smaller than it should be we'll just accept that scale and we can scale the top of the roof up leaving the rest of the image unscaled and we do that by just dragging a selection box over the roof it'll it'll snap to the reference line that's there and if we zoom in we can just um, bring the top edge down so it sits pretty much on the the top of the roof and then while that selection is active if we go into the um, scale tool again we can now scale that selection and drag that um, this time just just cancel that reset the scale we don't want to main we don't want to have it maintaining the aspect ratio we only want to scale in one direction so we'll break the chain this time and drag the top of the roof up to the top of the image so that gives us a barn that looks semi-orthographic 
graphic view. It isn't quite because of the way the roof goes in at the edges. It's not going to be used in Blender like that because we only want the reference of the RSJs and the the apex point when we're creating the barn. But we'll just scale that. It's created a new layer as a floating selection, so again we need to just accept that to a layer. Um, what we can do now is um, just chain those two together so that this is the, the roof section and the barn below. And when we move them, we can move them across over a little bit nearer to the other barn and start moving them, press control. And again, we can crop the image down because we don't need all of the white space on the side of the image that we've now got on the left hand side. So we'll crop that down and that gives us our image. So we can just export that as a PNG file, export as, comes up as PNG and um, we'll drop it into the reference as barn reference which I've already got but I'll just overwrite that with the one I've just made export and replace that and that gives us our reference now to work with in Blender so we'll come out of GIMP and open Blender and start to build the frame up okay um, I've decided I'll leave it at that for this video it's probably better just to keep it as GIMP and in the next video, video number 10, we'll take the uh, Open Blender and work from the default cube to create the reproduction of a Dutch barn using the reference drawing that we've just made. hope you found this interesting. GIMP's a little different to Blender and if you've never used an image um, editing program before, Hopefully it's not gone too quick for you, but there's lots of tutorials on GIMP that can explain in more detail than the quick overview I've given on this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again in the next video where we switch back to Blender to complete this project.